Hello and welcome to my new video, how to draw a modern house in two point perspective. First draw a horizontal line and then a vertical line. Next add a cross at each end of the horizontal line. These two crosses will be the two vanishing points in two point perspective. Now I'll mark a point towards the top of the vertical line and draw two diagonal lines going to each vanishing point. And now make a mark towards the bottom of the vertical line and again two diagonal lines going one to the left vanishing point and one to the right vanishing point. Next we could draw another diagonal towards the top and that will be the thickness of the roof on the right and then a vertical line about here and that will be the edge of the building on the far right. i just darken these two lines up a little bit so that I can see the lines that are going to be most important and then maybe just extend that line to get to the baseline. And then on the left hand side, again, the thickness of this modernist building will go all the way to the left vanishing point. And I make a mark here, which might not be the end of the building, but maybe some architectural detail of it. And then along here, I'll find the inside of the building. It's going to have an inside sort of porch like area. And so the diagonal will go to the left vanishing point. The verticals will stay upright. And then the baseline of this shape here will also go to the left vanishing point, because that's its general direction. And then along here, for the base of the building, from the right vanishing point, I can read this line across at the bottom and at the top to find a wall, like an interior wall, and then maybe just put a little thickness at the end of the building here, so the wall's got a thickness to it. And then find a place where this wall can stop. It doesn't need to stop on the original vertical line. I can make it go a little bit to the left, which might make a better composition. Composition is just where something is in relation to other things in a picture. Again, reading across from the left vanishing point and finding how this wall, if it went to the left, would become a more cube-like shape. And then this bit here, I'm going to make that into like a sort of buttress thing. And so that needs a vertical upright. And then it will go towards the right vanishing point at the top and at the bottom. And then it will need another side to it on the left-hand side should be about here and I just draw a vertical straight line, straightish line coming down there and then I want it to sort of funnel away to the left hand vanishing point and again just reading it across to that vanishing point and in that way you don't really need to think you can just see that if lines go towards the left and they're basically a cube like shape of the building they will end up at the vanishing point on the left and if lines go away towards the right of the cube like building they will all end up on the vanishing point on the right. So I just again make this line a little bit darker so that I can see which lines are important. Now this sort of structural shape that I'm putting on the left, I'm going to put another one of these sort of beams on the left. And again, working out where the top of this beam would go, would go to the right. The uprights would stay upright. The bottom of the beam would also go to the right. The right hand side of it would go to the right. So I would sort of visually read that across and quite often, like I'm doing at the moment, I move the pencil all the way to the vanishing point and that will give me a good indication, like it is here on the left, as to where they go. And because it's near the vanishing point, it will be smaller than the column at the foreground of the picture. So I have two columns here. And then this wall on the left-hand side needs to continue at the base, but also, sort of logically, it needs to continue up here, this line here, and then the roof would extend along there. And I just darken this line here. So we've got the basics of the building already. Maybe I'll put a column here, so that's like an ellipse or a circle on its side. Then I'll draw a vertical line coming straight down on the right hand side. And then for its thickness, just coming straight down the left hand side too. And then work out where the sort of little ellipse will be at the base. I tend to draw the back and front of the ellipse at the same time, but I only obviously need the front of the ellipse the front of the sort of squash circle shape. Now behind on this wall here, I'm just finding another sort of shape to put down. And it follows the same rules that we did before. So the lines will go towards the right hand side. Now in the foreground here, I'm going to put a swimming pool. So the top line here will go towards the left vanishing point. But then as the swimming pool comes towards us, those lines would need to sort of funnel away to the right vanishing point, the little dot on the right. 
Now these dots can be placed anywhere you want, but once they're in, they've got to stay where they are. So using the original vanishing point that I did, I extend this line across so the swimming pool can come right towards us. Now the swimming pool needs a little thickness to it, so I'll just make a vertical line there. And again, reading from the left vanishing point, I find a thickness of the, well not really the pool, but the side of the pool, and then below this line it could be some water or something like that. I'll figure that out later on. So now we've got the basic shape of the building, the basic shape of a swimming pool. And over on the left hand side here, I can make a path, and the path would just be two lines coming towards us, which are parallel, and because of perspective, they're going to look as if they meet at the vanishing point. And then maybe on the left here, I'll draw a wall or something like that. Maybe that would be a bit too solid. But again, these two lines aren't going to be parallel. They're going to sort of be going towards the right vanishing point. Now, if I just draw a shape within this, and then we can see the path going towards the vanishing point so that we've got a depth of field here, which might be quite useful. So the next step would be here. If it's going to be a swimming pool, it will need some sort of reflection. And that will also follow perspective, I guess. So it will go towards the right vanishing point, and that's just a quick way of finding out where it goes. And then this thickness of the swimming pool will also have a thickness of its reflection. And again, these lines, this line here, goes towards the right vanishing point. So the next step here is the upright column. We'll have a little bit of reflection in it as well. And now I think quite soon, I need to just use an eraser and rub out some of the lines which um, were the guidelines at the beginning of the drawing. And maybe those guidelines we don't need anymore. So the horizontal line that goes all the way through this drawing, I'll tidy that up. But maybe before I do that, I'll just put a door on the left-hand side of this wall. So the upright will just be a vertical. The top of the door will go to the left vanishing point, And then the other side of the upright will be another vertical line. So I think it's time to use an eraser and rub out some of the lines that I no longer need. I'm using a 4B pencil and some watercolour paper on this because I might, I think I might add some watercolour to it, um, but you could colour it in any way you want. Now on the right hand side here, if I draw a diagonal at the top and the bottom of the sort of height of a tree, and just draw a tree here, maybe I'll make them a little bit higher. So I'll put another diagonal there, and then the next tree will go behind the tree in the foreground and then the tree after that will also be somewhat obscured by the tree in front of it. So it's a series of trees and each one is sort of behind the tree in front. So there's only one tree that we can see fully and even that is behind the building. So this overlapping effect and the fact that the top and bottom of the trees go away in perspective will make a sense of distance. Then I think on the right hand side I'll put a path which will just go to the vanishing point but as it if I do a right angle in the path as it goes around the right angle the two lines will also go towards the left vanishing point so this path two of its lines go towards the right vanishing point and then when it changes direction the other two edges of it go towards the left vanishing point now this sort of wall here I don't really think that works it sort of confuses the building so I'm just going to extend the building at the back here and maybe speed up the video now because basically most of the lines are in. So if I put another sort of avenue of trees here and I can read them across from the trees on the right so that they're roughly the same size and this will be a more sort of obscure angle for these trees so they really will be overlapping quite a lot. And I just raise the horizontal line and replace it with darker lines. And then if I have the sun on the left hand side and have long shadows of everything, that would be quite useful if I put some watercolour or some tone on this. So sort of reading things like the column or the trees, which will be thin angled shadows. And then I could put an angle of the shadow on the building on the side here, which would be quite useful. Then these shadows on the left will sort of overlap and the building will have a shadow, I guess, on the trees as well. So I'm sort of mapping it out now, maybe put a door or a structure here, mapping it out so that I can add some tone. So to do that, I've decided I'm going to use watercolour. And first of all, what I'm going to do is paint the sky just with some water so that the, so that the paper is wet. And then I'll get an old watercolour tin and mix up a blue. And with the paper still wet, 
if I put the blue on it, it's going to run in, or bleed it's called, in watercolour, bleed across and it will sort of fade through. And if I just continue to do that, as you can see in the speeded up bit of the drawing, that it will sort of blend through to some extent. So it will be darkest at the top and then lighter as it comes towards the base horizontal line, which is obscured by the trees and the building anyway. And once that's dry, it will look like that. And then I can do something similar with swimming pool here. So it's a bit thicker here. And as my paint runs out, it will sort of blend to a bit thinner, which will be useful to create some sort of depth in the swimming pool. And then on the side of the building, I just use a sort of light mid-tone to create some sense of shadow. Now with watercolour, it's quite a good idea if you mix up enough of a shadow sort of colour. But if you mix up enough of it before you start, and then you don't need to sort of re rediscover the colour that you've chosen. Now by making the dark sides of the building darker, it will make the white of the paper seem brighter because it's contrasting to something which is tonally darker next to it. So in a picture, if you want to have a higher contrast, you can't just keep things light. You have to create some areas which are dark as well. And then with the trees, some localised colour to the trees. And then on the paths, I'll just make those a sort of mid-tone uh, brownish sort of colour. And then maybe now that's dry, I might just add a little bit more tone to the side of the swimming pool here. That would have a tone on it because it would be in shadow. And then next, I could just use a pencil, 4B pencil again, and just put across the lines of the path just to create a stronger sense of perspective. So these lines will get closer together as they get further away towards the horizon. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope most of all that you find it useful for your own drawing. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel Circle Line Art School where you'll find over 170 different how to draw videos and a new video every week. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.